seems like a draw was a fair result. He could have tried to win on time, but I guess he didn't want to. Probably would have won on time if he had kept playing. Hey, everybody. Let's see. Can you give Tyler one a chess lesson for PogChamps? He streamed for two hours in toddler quality. What? Thanks, Sir Percival. The people who coach the PogChamps people are determined by chess.com and the Pog people, not by me asking. Isn't Tyler 100 ELO? He's still better than half you guys. Still theory. We should be on chess TV any moment. This is what happens when you only know how to move pawns and the other guy only knows how to move a knight. Then you get this kind of game. I'm going to make a non-pawn move? That's crazy. When I was a kid, a guy who later became a good friend of mine, uh, Steve Feldman, FIDE master, he was giving a simul and I was like seven. So I was probably like a thousand strength or maybe weaker. And I played bishop d3 in the opening and his queen like took on d3 and it was like his queen was on d3, my bishop was gone, then he walked to the next board. And I was like, what just happened? It was very similar to this, except he took a pawn at least. My queen's sort of trapped on e5. My queen is trapped on e5, plays d6 and wins my queen. Man, truth hurts. All right, let's get back to safety. The purpose of pog champs, and I don't know if if it's happening, but probably because they keep having it, so is is to popularize chess amongst people who don't necessarily play chess, but follow the people who are playing in pog champs. So I guess it works because they keep doing it, but it's not to watch good chess. Well, you don't have to watch good chess. You can watch bad chess. It makes everybody else feel better about themselves. Yeah, that's that I mean, I know exactly what that's like from both sides. The Ju Wen Jun game. If you haven't seen the Ju Wen Jun game today, then you should see it. So she's playing somebody I've never heard of whose feed A rating is twenty four hundred. Same as mine. I think she's twenty four oh three, so she's you know, three points higher than me. And she's totally winning. She's plus a million. The whole game between moves like 22 and 50, she's plus five, six, seven, eight, nine. And she's winning material 
and she has a choice of how to win material and she missed some easier wins, but okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. And she missed forced wins of big material and around move 90 or 80, uh, Zhu Wenzhen equalized, even though she was down two pawns for nothing and ending and losing. And it was much worse than that before. Like I'm, I'm being nice when I say she was losing in an end game because it shouldn't have got to an end game. But okay, whatever. And by the way, if you know the famous Fisher game against Spassky from their match, it's one of the first few games. Fisher plays Bishop takes a four, and Spassky resigns. If you if you remember that, um, there's a pawn on a four, and Fisher takes it, and it's like foe defended. Like if you take the bishop, you get crushed. So he just resigned. Uh, she had that tactic. She had the bishop takes a4 tactic. Bishop takes a4, resigns. But that doesn't matter. She was winning anyway. And ended up getting into an ending of rook knight and two versus rook knight and two. Same pawns. So a draw. Then she sacked her knight for both pawns. The woman I'd never heard of. So it was rook and two pawns versus rook and knight. And then Ju Wan Jun won both of the pawns. So it's rook and knight against rook. <clears throat> which is really drawn. It's hard to lose that. And then she she lost it. It's hard to lose Rook and Knight versus Rook. So, I mean, the game was like 135 moves. And for the first 100 moves, there was a 0% chance Ju Wen Jun would win. <clears throat> I mean, that was a crazy game. And I know how both players felt. You You feel weird winning a game like that. That was a knockout game. They drew the first game, so Zhu and Jim would have been out of the competition. I guess I'll go. Well, my pawn's hanging. Okay, but I can play knight here. Ah, the knight's here. I could take it, then play knight here. Okay, I figured it out after I moved. Well, I mean, she can recover because the event's over, but psychologically. That could ruin a person. That could, they just have no confidence. Or she can just brush it off and be like, yeah, whatever. I've lost a lot of games like that in my life. So, you know, whatever. It's on a big stage and I could beat the, the, the world champion and knock her out of the tournament. I've never been in that situation. But I've lost games where I couldn't lose. It was impossible to lose. And I've lost games like that. Always sack the exchange. You have one legal move. Always sack the exchange. Man, Rook takes is hard to stop. Truth hurts. This is what it feels like when God has a gun. This looks like my favorite game. God versus... Damn! I hate to play Knight Takes Rook winning both of his Rooks because I feel like I should have more. I think I do have more. I think I can go here, here, and here. Or here, here, and here. and Or here. That's a funnier mate. I feel like I shouldn't play Knight Takes Rook because I have more than that. If you play anybody who does this, they're cheating. So you can report them. Yeah, I was threatening three mates in one. I, I was threatening the, the mate that I did, knight h7 mate and knight d7 mate. And he stopped two of them. That's pretty good. Right? Stopped two mates because this king has e8. All right, that's we'll finish with that game. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.